Hello, I'm John Durrant, and this tutorial is going to explore an example of using free RTOS kernel SMP, symmetric multiprocessing, for the Raspberry Pi Pico, to be able to run free RTOS tasks across both cores using scheduler control. The goal for the video are to briefly position SMP by reminding ourselves of the functionality of the free RTOS kernel, to look at the additional features that SMP brings, then to look at an example of using queues and tasks with SMP. To reproduce the example, you will need some equipment. You will need the Pico or a Pico W or an RP2040 board with the same pinout as the Raspberry Pi Pico, a micro USB cable for power and a breadboard. Six LEDs, any colors will do. I'm going to use one green, one blue, four red. That's just so I can distinguish in the commentary what I'm talking about. Each LED will need a 75 ohm resistor. The tutorial assumes that you have a development environment set up and can compile C or C++ code for the Pico and copy the binary over onto the Pico to run. You can use either boot select or SWD for this. If you're only just starting with the Pico, then I have a course that walks through the setup of the SDK and toolchain for the Pico development. This goes through how to set up projects, compile and flash the Pico and run debugging against it. Details are on my website, drjohnea.co.uk stroke IOT. Let's quickly summarize what FreeRTOS kernel is, just to bring everyone up to the same level. FreeRTOS publish a number of libraries supporting real-time operating systems. They have been designed for microcontrollers, like the Pico. The group behind FreeRTOS collaborate extensively with chip designers to make the libraries efficient. FreeRTOS is distributed under the MIT license, which allows a great deal of freedom in the use of the code. We can copy, modify it and distribute it as part of our own applications. FreeRTOS provides five sections of libraries. The kernel we will focus on here. That's what gives us the ability to run tasks and to communicate between those tasks. FreeRTOS Plus provides open libraries to build TCP IP stacks for microcontrollers and command line interfaces. FreeRTOS Core provides protocols such as HTTP for web servers and services, MQTT for IoT, and SNTP for date and time services. FreeRTOS Lab is a more experimental set of libraries looking at Loran WAN, a wireless low bandwidth but large distributed network communication protocol, TCP IP v6, the successor of the traditional TCP IP protocol, and POSIX, a full Unix library capability. FreeRTOS is supported significantly by AWS and the AWS IoT is also a framework. This uses the MQTT protocol from core and adds the high level services such as jobs and device shadows. FreeRTOS kernel allows us to expand our RP2040 to run more tasks. In a singular core model, we can run the scheduler on the core zero and then run multiple tasks on that same core. The creation and management of the tasks is fairly simple with FreeRTOS. The framework also provides mechanisms for the tasks to communicate. These are task notification, semaphores or buffers. FreeRTOS has a capability to run across multiple cores called the Symmetric Multiprocessing, SMP. This will allow us to make use of both cores of the RP2040 but only worry about FreeRTOS functions. With SMP, we can actually make use of both of the cores on the RP2040 with FreeRTOS kernel using the symmetric multiprocessing feature. The scheduler will then run on just one of the cores, while both cores get to run tasks for us. We have the ability to choose which core a task will run on, or to allow it to move between cores based on scheduler decisions. There is a port of FreeRTOS SMP for the RP2040, which makes our life easy. SMP is an experimental part of FreeRTOS and not part of the main branch. It is designed for processes where the cores are equivalent, 
symmetric, as they put it. Those cores use the same contiguous memory. This all applies to the Pico and RP2040. FreeRTOS SMP adds four functions to all of the features I've previously mentioned for the FreeRTOS kernel. Firstly, to manage affinity sets for tasks. These associate a task with a set of cores. By default, tasks are associated with all the cores, so we can use the set of functions to fix a task to core 0 or core 1. We can also disable preemptive multitasking for a given task, i.e. prevent the task from being interrupted by the scheduler. The task will then need to use task delay or task yield to release control to the scheduler. In the example for this tutorial, I've used FreeRTOS SMP version v2021.10.00. This will already be available in the repository. For your own projects, you can add this using the commands git submodule add to download the FreeRTOS kernel, then from within the FreeRTOS kernel folder, issuing the command git checkout with a version to check out. It's easy to confirm that you have the FreeRTOS kernel library with SMP included by looking at the task.h file. If you have the vtask core affinity set function, then you have the right version. So in our example, we're going to set up a Pico of agent tasks in SMP mode. We'll run a copy of blink agent on core one to blink a blue LED attached to GPIO 15. A second copy of this blink agent we will fix to core zero and have blink a green LED on GPIO zero. Then we'll set up a counter agent to display a binary value between zero and 15 as a pattern on the four LEDs on GPIO two to five. We'll fix this task to core one. And finally, we'll generate a random number and send this to our counter display agent, which is on core one. This task we will allow to switch from core zero to core one under the scheduler's control. So this example will run on this circuit schematic. We'll place the green LED on GPO zero and a blue LED on GPO 15. We'll use four red LEDs on GPIO 2 to 5. Each LED is sourcing power from the Pico through a 75 ohm resistor. The LEDs will therefore illuminate when the GPIO pad is driven to a high state. So my breadboard will look like this. I've connected ground to the top negative bar on the breadboard. Then we have a blue LED and resistor on GPIO 15 and a green LED on GPIO 0. I've cheated a bit for the four red LEDs by using a home built module. This just has four red 1.8 millimeter LEDs connected to 75 ohm resistors. It takes ground from pin three and then power for each LED from GPI two to five. On the bottom of the board, I have a reset switch that I use for boot select flashing for boards in my photo studio. In actual development, I have a much more scratch looking board and use SWD to flash code. The code is all housed on GitHub and you will need to use the Git utility to download or clone it. The repository makes reference to the FreeRTOS kernel library. So we use the recursive submodule switch to bring this down too. I tend to keep all of my source projects in a folder called source within my home directory. Wherever you are comfortable hosting your project files is a place to execute this command. I will put a link to the repository in the comments. Let's look at the structure of the project. The project is a folder with four key folders below it. Build will hold the binary files, built by the compiler and the intermediary files. Source folder will hold all of the source files for our project. Lib folder contains the libraries we're using for this project. Port contains our port code for the specific libraries. This is normally the free RTOS configuration header file. We use the utility CMake to build our project. There are a number of key make files 
which define the build process. At the top level directory, we have the main make file, which references everything else. This includes the standard make definitions for Pico SDK. We also have a project owned make file here for FreeRTOS. This does any of the local FreeRTOS make configuration and will then reference the FreeRTOS library folder containing yet another make file. Our source folder contains the other key make files we will work on, which lists our source files and libraries to link with. The C make file for FreeRTOS I have provided assumes you have set the variable FreeRTOS config file directory, which is where the, to find the FreeRTOS configuration header file for the project. To use SMP, we must also add some definitions to get the SMT functions included. The FreeRTOS configuration file for the project is in the port FreeRTOS kernel directory. This includes definitions needed for the SMP, including the number of cores and if we can associate a task with a specific core called Affinity. My example is going to use four components. Blink1 and Blink2 are both instances of the Blink agent class. These will be the tasks that blink our green and blue LEDs. I build tasks by encapsulating them as an C++ object. I'll talk more about the agent structure on the next slide. Counter agent is what will display the 4-bit value 0 to 15 on the four red LEDs. It runs as a task taking its commands from a queue. Our main task is really where the SMP work will be done. The main task will associate the other tasks with the appropriate cores. It will also generate and send the random number between 0 and 15 to the counter agent. Let's take a look at the agent class structure. Most of the tasks in my application I build as C++ objects. They conform to the agent superclass definition, so they can be directly controlled to start or stop the task. They can also give me some debug information on stack usage, high volt watermarks, etc. To provide an agent subclass, I need to provide the run task that will run the main loop of that task. I also need to specify the stack size through defining the get max stack size function. So to produce a blink agent, an active agent to blink a single LED, I inherit from agent take the LED GPIO pad in the constructor and provide the run and stack size methods. So counter agent is going to look very much like bleak agent class. It will manage four LEDs and we need to provide their pad numbers in the constructor. In addition to the standard agent public interface, we have two additional functions to be used by the client, on and off. On includes one byte unsigned integer the lower four bits of which will be used as a pattern of illumination for the four red LEDs. On, if you pass zero to it, will do the same thing as off. These functions capture the request in a queue, which is then read by the run method. On the protected side of the interface, we add an initialization function to set things up. Then an internal work function to take an LED pattern and instantly apply it to the LEDs. We hold a queue handle and the pad definition as part of the object. So all the SMP work is in our main task. We'll set up the agents and start them. We'll create a core mask for core zero only. This means setting the first bit of the byte, so a value of one. This core mask is used as the affinity set for our first blink task. We'll then create a core mask for core one only i.e. a mask where the second bit of the byte is set, or a value of 2. We apply this affinity set to blink1 and counter agent. Our main task will continue to run on both cores. Our loop is going to print out which core it is running on, using a global value defined in SIO.h within the SDK. We should see this changing from core 0 to core 1 and back again over time. It will also generate the random value and send it to the counter. To build the project yourself, create a folder called build. From within the build folder, 
issue the command cmake dot dot. Then when that completes, the command make. This will give you the elf or uf2 file in the source folder under build. You can then use swd flashing or boot select flashing of the Pico. In the video, we can see both of the blink agents blinking the LEDs at either end of the Pico. Then our four red LEDs are displaying the random values. So on the screen capture of the standard I.O., we can see that the counter is telling us it is running on core one, blink zero is on core zero, blink one is on core one. Main at this point is on core zero. A little later, we can see that main is now on core one. So main is definitely sending the random numbers from both cores. Our counter agent is able to pick them up from its queue and display them. This has been a short tutorial on using SMP on the Raspberry Pico. Please like and subscribe for more content. This tutorial has been quite a rapid tour of FreeRTOS kernel SMP. It has demonstrated how tasks can be associated with a particular core or allowed to run against both cores. We have shown that queues can be used to communicate from either cores. For further tutorials on FreeRTOS kernel functionality, please take a look at my Udemy course, FreeRTOS on the Raspberry Pi Pico. This looks in more detail at tasks, semaphores, task notification, queues, and message buffers, as well as SMP. It provides 15 separate project examples of FreeRTOS kernel, which will all compile and run on the Pico.